Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will be introduced to the parsers. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will at first observe the definition of parser. Thereafter, we will observe the ways of generating parse trees. And finally, we will observe the various classification of parsers. Now coming to the definition of the parser, if you remember, during the session, different phases of compiler, we were briefly introduced to the parser or the syntax analyzer. Let's now observe the formal definition of the parser. So basically, a parser is a program that generates a parse tree for the given string if the string is generated from the underlying grammar. Now what is meant by this? Observe this particular C code. After being processed through the lexical analyzer, this particular code will be converted into a string like this. Now this string will be fed into the parser which is basically a program. Now the job of this parser is to generate the parse tree. Now the parse tree can only be generated if the string can be generated from the underlying grammar. So basically the parse tree for this string can be generated by this parser if this particular string can be generated by the underlying grammar. So what the parser program will do? It will take the string as input and with the help of this underlying grammar, it will generate the respective parse tree. So let's revise the formal definition of parser once again. A parser is a program that generates a parse tree for a given string if the string is generated from the underlying grammar. Let's now observe how the parse trees can be generated. Now the generation of the parse tree can be done in two ways. The first one is the top-down approach and the second one is the bottom-up approach. Now in order to understand these approaches in bit more details, let's take an actual grammar and say with the help of this grammar, we are to generate the string A, A, B, C, D, E. Let's start off with the top-down approach first. Now in case of the top-down approach, we will begin from the start symbol. So first we will take the start symbol. Now observe the production for S. S can be rewritten as small a followed by capital A, capital B followed by small e. So from S, we will derive small a, capital A, capital B, small e. Now observe the string carefully. This particular string has a at the beginning and e in the end. Now with this derivation, we have covered the first a and the last e of this particular string. Now coming back to our parse tree. We have got two more non-terminals, capital A and capital B. Let's observe the productions for them. A can be rewritten as capital A followed by small b, small c or A can be rewritten as small a. Now coming to b, b can be rewritten as small d. Now observe the string a little bit more carefully. Apart from a and e, at the beginning and at the end, we also have b, c in the middle, right? So if from this particular A, using the production rule A can be written as A, B, C, we derive capital A followed by small b, small c. Now observe the derivation. Apart from A and E, we have now also covered the terminals B, C in the middle of the string. Now let's come back to our parse tree. Observe. From this A, selecting the production rule A can be written as A if we derive A. With this derivation, we have covered A, A at the beginning. Observe A, then this A. Now in this entire parse tree, we have got only one non-terminal that is B. And B can be rewritten as D. So let's derive that from this B, that is terminal D. Now observe the yield A, A, B, C, D, E, which is exactly this string. Now allow me to illustrate this derivation in a linear way. So we will start off with S deriving A followed by capital A, capital B, small e. Now from this sentential form, we are going to select this A for expansion. Observe the parse tree. This A was expanded using the production rule capital A followed by small b, small c. So let's do that in here. Basically, we use the production rule A can be rewritten as capital A followed by small b, small c. Now coming back to our parse tree, observe, once this one is derived, after that we are going to expand this A. So we will select this A for expansion 
and from this a using the production rule a can be written as small a we are going to derive small a now in this entire string this is the only non terminal and the rule for that is b can be written as d so we will select this b for expansion and from this one we will derive d now observe this derivation carefully at every point we kept on expanding the leftmost non terminal didn't we so this is leftmost derivation so what i am trying to say is in top down approach we use leftmost derivation now during this derivation the only decision we are going to make is which production to use observe from this a we could have derived a but if we did so we couldn't derive bc and that is the reason we chose this production over this production so basically in top down approach we are to decide which production to use at which step so this is all about the top down approach which is followed by the top down parsers let's now observe the bottom up approach now in case of bottom up approach as the name suggests we will start off with the string itself now if you observe the production rules we generally say the left hand side can be rewritten as the right hand side right but alternatively we can also say the right hand side can be reduced to the left hand side that is this particular terminal d can be reduced to this particular non terminal b using this logic the bottom up approach works so basically we will start off with the string itself and using the production rules we will keep on reducing the string until we get back to the start symbol let me show you how we do this now in this particular string observe this a this a can be reduced back to capital a using the production rule a can be rewritten as small a or in other words small a can be reduced to capital a now after this is reduced to a if we include a b c these three can also be reduced to a because capital a followed by bc can be reduced to capital a now observe we have got this d haven't we now from the production rule b can be rewritten as d or in other words the terminal d can be reduced back to the non terminal b so let's reduce d back to b now observe we have got a followed by capital a capital b small e now all of these together can be reduced back to the start symbol s due to the production rule s can be rewritten as small a followed by capital a capital b small e or in other words the left hand side of this production can be reduced back to the start symbol s so in bottom up approach starting from the string we keep on reducing until we reach the start symbol and this is how the parse tree is generated in bottom up approach now let me illustrate this derivation in a linear manner starting with the start symbol s we are going to derive this sentential form small a capital a capital b small e now this time we are going to select this b for expansion using the production rule b can be rewritten as d and from this b we are going to derive d observe now this is the only non terminal in this entire sentential form so we will select this non terminal for expansion and this time we are going to make use of the rule a can be rewritten as capital a is followed by small b small c so from this a we are going to derive capital a followed by small b small c now observe in this particular sentential form this is the only non terminal so we will select that for expansion now from this a we are deriving small a using the production rule a can be rewritten as small a so from this a we are going to derive a only now observe the derivation bit carefully starting from the first sentential form at every point we kept on expanding the rightmost non terminal isn't it therefore this derivation is nothing but rightmost derivation however this is not exactly rightmost derivation now why so observe the bottom up approach carefully we didn't derive the string from the start symbol rather starting from the string we reduced the entire thing back to the start symbol therefore it is rightmost derivation but in reverse 
So, bottom up approach uses rightmost derivation in reverse. And during the generation of this parse tree in bottom up approach, the decision we are going to make is when to reduce. So, this is all about the bottom up approach which is used by all the bottom up parsers. So, basically, the generation of parse tree can be done in two ways. One is top down approach, which is followed by the top down parsers, and the another one is bottom up approach, which is followed by the bottom up parsers. Let's now observe the classification of parsers. So, parsers can be broadly classified into two different categories the top down parsers, which use the top down approach, and the bottom up parsers, which use the bottom up approach. Now, coming to top down parsers, these can be broadly classified into two more categories that is, top down parsers with backtracking and top down parsers without backtracking. Now, the top down parsers which allow backtracking can be categorized into brute forcing algorithms, and this particular top down parser uses the method of backtracking which we observed in the session non determinism in CFGs. Coming to the top down parsers without backtracking, this can also be further classified into two different categories. One is the recursive descent parsers, and the next one is the predictive parsers. Now, some examples of predictive parsers are LL1, LLK. Now, coming to the bottom of parsers, these are also known as the shift reduce parsers. Now, these parsers can also be classified into two different categories. One is the operator precedence parsers, and the other one is the LR parsers. Now, coming to LR parsers, these can be classified into four different categories LR0, SLR1, LLR1, and CLR1. Now, we will learn about the different parsers in different sessions. In this chapter, we are going to focus on the top down parsers, specifically the top down parsers without backtracking. And in the next chapter, we will learn about all the bottom up parsers. However, I would like to provide some insights about the different parsers. Now, except for the operator precedence parsers, all the other parsers are unable to handle the ambiguous grammars. So, apart from this particular parser, for all the different parsers, we will have to use unambiguous CFGs. Now, coming to the top down parsers with backtracking, these can handle the non deterministic CFGs. However, the top down parsers without backtracking are unable to do it. So, for these parsers, we will have to look for non determinism in the CFGs, and if there are any, we will have to remove that. Apart from this, these kind of parsers are also incapable of dealing with the left recursion. Now, coming to the LR parsers, SLR1 is more powerful than LR0, LLR1 is more powerful than SLR1, and CLR1 is the most powerful LR parser. So, this is the classification of parsers. So, in this session, we first observe the definition of parser, thereafter, we observe the ways of generating parse trees, and finally, we observe the classification of parsers. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will learn about the recursive descent parser. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.